You know how we're seeing an emergence of influencers in India? Yeah. And a lot of people are becoming quite skeptical. And I've actually read on online some people saying, what do these bloody influencers do? They're, they're just, they're just absolutely, these guys add no value. Yeah. But if you actually think about what influencers are doing, the good ones, they're shaping or reshaping public opinion on certain things that most people aren't even aware of. Most people aren't aware of a lot of things that are currently happening in the world and that directly or indirectly are squashing people's opportunities or suppressing them from succeeding. So influencers play, good ones play an important part in providing original perspectives on problems and why those problems exist and what the solution is. So a lot of the educational future is going to be shaped by influencers. Uh, directly or indirectly, they're going to place pressure on traditional institutions to review what they're teaching. Because if they if their traditional institutions like universities and schools don't start reviewing what they're teaching, you're going to have more and more skepticism building because what's actually happening in the world, everyone's, not everyone, but a lot of people are starting to ask this question. You know, I've spent 16 years in the education system, 12 years in school. I've done three, four years of, you know, tertiary education. And here I am, I'm not really fulfilled. I'm not really inspired. I don't really have a great lifestyle. I, I don't have great self-esteem. I don't have great influence. I don't have great impact. I don't even have financial abundance. So people are starting to wake up to the fact that there is something wrong, that there is obviously something that they don't know. And so good influencers can play a really important part in bringing these issues to the surface because we can't rely on traditional media to educate us on, on what's happening. So that's why that's the role that influencers play. The problem now is though that in the in this influencer space, it's also been contaminated. You've got a lot of players now in this space who don't really have genuine expertise. And they're simply regurgitating information that they're hearing from one place and they're sharing it. In many cases, they're misinforming people. They're not providing deep and well-researched perspectives. So, and and there, a lot of them, are, you know, for lack of a better word, fake in terms of the fact that the lifestyle that they're demonstrating is not the, the real lifestyle that they're living. Uh, yeah. Um, but, you know, you get bad people in every industry. You get bad people in real estate. You get bad bankers. You get bad doctors. You get all kinds of bad people, but I don't think that people should be dismissing this industry because this whole emergence of coaches, consultants, mentors, speakers, advisors, it's a response to the fact that the education system and the work system is largely broken and somebody needs to fix it. And since the institutions are not fixing it, you're down seeing, and social media has given a platform to influencers to actually get their voice out and people can decide, nobody's forcing anybody. The good thing about this is, you see, when you enroll in a school or university, you're forced to come by. When you follow an influencer, nobody's forcing you. You are choosing. It's a choice. You're choosing who you're going to follow. Right. You're choosing what you want to learn. And so if you're, if you're adding value to people, you build an audience as an influencer. If you're not adding value or you're adding superficial value, eventually you won't. Yeah. So I think that's the, that's the thing. And, um, and so I think there's a, there's a massive opportunity, but there's also a lot of misunderstanding. And so I think as somebody who is seen as an influencer, I never had a desire to be one, but somebody who has been seen as an influencer, we also have the obligation and responsibility to make sure that we are providing well-researched, well-balanced perspectives, and we are informing people, and we are shaping public opinion for the better or for the worse. And so I think that's an obligation and responsibility on all of us. It's a serious thing. It's not just, you know, you just pick up the phone and start talking rubbish just to get attention. And I think over a period of time, what's going to happen is people are going to start to experience fatigue. People are going to say there's too many influencers. A lot of them are talking this, a lot of them are talking that. And so what will happen is a lot of them who are not actually creating genuine value, they will automatically start to disappear and they'll vanish because people are not going to reward them. And the cream of the cream will rise to the top. All the people that are actually adding genuine value, they're going to become even more established. And they'll even monetize what they're doing because they're genuinely adding value to it. I think we already see them monetizing now. So in the coming days, Ron, what do you think? 
is this only going to grow? I think it will. I think what we are seeing is what I call the um, the rise of the online, the digital CEO. Right, right. You're seeing the rise of the digital CEO. You know, back back in the day, the only CEOs were ones that worked for corporations. Yeah. Now it's different. Now you are building from scratch, and you're using the internet and you're using social media to build your prospect base, your customer base, your client base, and you're using digital marketing. And if you have real value to give, it's the same. It's all the principles of conventional business also apply to online business, except right. that online business is a lot more complex. People are assuming that the online businesses are simple because they see people, you, the, see the barriers to entry are very low. Anybody can pick up a phone and make a bill. Yeah. But to actually do well in this space, you have to be business minded as well. You have to be smart. You have to be strategic. Right. So you need all the skills that a corporate CEO needs. If you're going to build a big business online, you, you still need those skills, but you can't hide behind a company name. You are the person who's out there. You are the person that is sharing your story, sharing your message, sharing your perspectives. So that's the difference. It's a lot more personalized than how corporate businesses are around. But there's, but there's definitely the rise of the digital CEO. The digital CEO um, has more time autonomy, more impact and more influence than a conventional CEO. And they have potentially more scalability, greater profit margins. If they are able to take their passion and they're able to use that to solve somebody's problem and they're able to monetize that well. But there's a real opportunity there. With this growth, looks how big of an impact these institutions are going to bear. I think their impact is already starting to decrease. Yeah, big time. I think because people can now get information, once people start to become aware, then people start to question the institutions. Now, I think institutions have a place but the problem is the institutions have not been innovating for too long. They became comfortable. You see, a university doesn't have to do any work now. They don't even have to get their students to get good results. Because of the way the culture is set in Asia, people will automatically line up to buy a university degree. Exactly. Even if there is no proof that it works, just because it's so entrenched in people's mentality. Mm. So universities have become complacent. They're still using curriculums from the industrial age with a little bit of, you know, they've used, they've modified them a little bit, but not enough for people to take the learnings, implement them and get results in the real world. And that's why you're seeing that despite there being such a oversupply of knowledge workers, very few are actually living uh, the, the life and lifestyle that they want.